Hello, this is a Phoenix tutorial video by CDP Inc. I'm Matthew Donnelly and our topic today is schedule updates in Phoenix. Let's get started. So here you can see we have our Orange Grove substation Phoenix project with a project start and a data date of the 1st of January 2024. And for the sake of this update process we are going to assume that today is January the 8th so we're going to be doing a full week's update from the 1st of January up until today, which will be the 8th of January. The update process in Phoenix is going to be a multi-step cycle, and we evangelize the first step in that cycle, which is going to be creating backups. You'll always want to create a backup project of your current project you're working in in Phoenix before you ever make any updates or changes. So the backup project in Phoenix is going to start in your file system menu, save as, and then when you're doing your save as you want to make sure that you initial it and give it an appropriate name that describes your backup. So for us this is going to be our initial plan before we get into any of our future update periods. And now that we have created our backup, we can go ahead and get prepped and ready for our first update. And again, we're going to go right back into that file save as menu because now we want to date this with the date of our update. And if you remember, our date is going to be the 8th of January 2024. So we're going to give it that update name and eventually we're going to advance our data date to that specific date as well. The next thing you should do when updating your schedule is to have a view set up or a layout specifically for updating your project. And the one I have here, I've got no codes active. It's currently sorted ascending based on start date. And I've also filtered out all completed activities and hammock activities because I don't need to update those and I don't want to see them. Now with all that set up, we're ready to roll. We can head up into our schedule system menu dropdown and choose to begin an update. And here it's going to ask us what our data date is. For us, we can go ahead and point it to today, the 8th of January, 2024. And now we just need to give it a name. And you can give it a name, update as of the date that you're doing it. You can just put the date and memorialize it. So then we can go ahead and hit begin update. And it's going to create a curtain for us from our project start to our data date. And that's because this is our first update. This curtain will begin based on whatever your last update period ended on. It's also going to highlight our activities in our activity table in blue so we know exactly what we should be updating and you can see this is exactly why I want to sort my start date ascending so I have everything in a nice waterfall diagram to go ahead and start updating. Doing our actual update you do have the capability of going ahead and plugging in your values into your columns. For instance I could plug in the actual start there for notice to proceed but keep in mind if you do this you'll have to be perfectly accurate matching the format of these dates. I can't just put in 1-1-24. It won't let me. I can't hit enter. It'll blank it out. For this reason, I prefer to use the detail editor at the bottom, the activity editor. Gives me a much better ease of control when I'm updating my activities. So according to the work that's actually been done in the field, notice to proceed did actually start and it's important you check actual before you change your date. It did actually start on the 1st of January 2024. We can hit enter. You'll see that locks it in there. We can progress down into our project start and again from the field we got an actual value of the 3rd of January. It started on time as well. We can mark that as entered. And if we continue mobilize however this time we did not start on time. We were supposed to start on the 3rd. However, we got word that we actually got delayed two days and started on the 5th of January. And again, since our update period is until the 8th, we don't know whether or not we've currently finished. We still have remaining work. And if there's remaining work, there are three ways to calculate that in our 
Phoenix schedule first is going to be just by plugging in our actual remaining days if you know that. You can also choose your percent complete if you want to plug in a percent complete. CDP has a video on that as well you can check out. And the third way is by plugging in a finish date. And you see here if I plug in a finish date, let's say of the 15th of January, you'll notice that it automatically adjusts my remaining duration to five days. You can see how these three are all linked. And since there are no other activities that need to be updated during this period, we can come up to our schedule system menu, come down to end update, and then the last step is going to be in schedule. We can choose to schedule now, and you'll see how everything now is updated with the values according to the schedule updates we put in there. Our data date has now been advanced to the 8th of January. And you can see the effect on every activity downstream. If it has a green color in your start and finish dates, that means that your updates affected them and they've now been recalculated and our project is set to finish earlier than expected. So now with our first update period done, if you wanted to create further updates in the future as you must, again the process is file save as and then you will redate it. So for next week we would do the 15th of January and then from there I would go into the schedule begin update where we would then need to advance it to that day the 15th of January and then update your activities as follows and then the nice thing is is as you're creating projects along the way each of them are going to be different iterations of your project timeline so in case you ever need a backup or something goes wrong and you need to restore a previous version you'll have those projects as backups and you'll also be creating store points along the way and there is another CDP video on store points where we are able to compare store points to our current project progress. Think of these like our baselines. And with all that being said, that is the general process of how you update your schedule in Phoenix. As always, thanks for watching. You can find our website and further videos at www.cdp-inc.com. We'd love to hear from you. Please reach out to our email or phone number and connect with CDP Inc. on LinkedIn. See you in the next video.